arrived Sapele, a popular town in Delta State in the night. It's a new day and we're on the move, still in the busy Sapele. This is the home of the Pablogbas, a family from Sekilewu. They moved from the ancient town to Sapele because of the unfavorable living conditions there. Chief Idabo Pablogba is close to a hundred years old. He is the oldest Sekilewu indigen and lives with his son in Sapele, kilometers away from their native town. His son, Sir Robert Pablogba, tells us the reason for this. All the economic things have died away. At present, in life, the community people are in danger. For survival, it's difficult for somebody to survive. Because all the handwork they've been doing, all what they have been doing to get fish to cut a bora and other things have gone away. And the salt water came in, drive away the fish. And the land is a shallow land. Because of this, this uh, odor, this uh, smoke from the oil, with the breath in, you see, many, many of those boys are sick. Many, many. I've retired, I retired, I thought I retired now. I would have been enjoying there. But because of all this uh, suffering, they, for me to go and suffer, they let me remain here which is not comfortable for me. We decided to visit Sekilewu to see firsthand the experience there. Our first discovery was this transit point to the River Rhine area, the Sapele port, which used to be a busy spot. This port was once a sinusure of all eyes, but now it's just a place for sand dredging business and also for commercial boats to ferry passengers to other communities. An old building housing the Nigeria Police Marine Division. Sapele sits at a corner of the area and many people get sand from the riverbanks to sail across River Rhine communities. We noticed pipes crisscrossing the river and some oil rigs. One wonders what is being pumped into the water as thick black smoke makes its way into the clouds. Now it's time to travel across the Benin River. Excitement hit the hair as we prepared to go to Sekilewu. We marched to where the boat was on wooden planks and we were given life jackets. Slowly, the charter boat sailed and the journey began. Sawmills, villages, trees and weeds, boats, all rigs line up the scenery. Through ceaseless tidal waves, we traveled the length and breadth of the Benin River, sighting villages and trees from a distance. Minutes into the journey, my excitement began to wane as the boat kept going on and on, navigating through sea debris and water hyacinths. I began to react to the endless breeze on my longest journey yet on water. Our boat leaving beautiful traces behind. At intervals, we were asked to raise our hands in surrender at military checkpoints.
as the journey continued. This time, the color of the water had changed drastically to a brownish shade, polluted, mixed with oil. Then we noticed a semblance of business activities, this time on canoes. Coolers, containers, logs of wood on canoes moving from village to village and pupils paddling canoes to convey themselves to and from school. Everyone paddling their own canoes. Just beside this tree that has been submerged is the school building in Kokubene, literally about to fall. This is as a result of flooding. Finally, we reached Sekelewu, one of the ten Ijo communities that make up the Egbema clan in Wari North Delta State, where houses on stilts welcome you. From Sapele to this community, it took us uh, about uh, two hours, 45 minutes to come here. First, we pass through Ogara down to Koko, from Koko down to, uh, there's a place called Yukubene, along the Benue River. We have a Santuak Bene, we have a Dibak Bene. Then down to Bokoda, to Opuama, Agoduba, before you get to this place. When you are using the local boat, if the local boat leaves Sapele in the morning at 9 a.m., it will get to this place the next day, 2 a.m. This is a secular concrete landing jetty with an overhead walkway, but the color of the water around this area leaves much to be desired. A goat takes shelter at the waiting shed. Water tanks stand tall, but taps are all dry. A cockroach scavenges for what to eat in the area decorated with weeds. Sekelewu, a land supposed to be flowing with milk and nani because of its large deposits of crude oil, but it seems this is now more of a curse than a blessing. Luck was on our side. We reached the shores of Sekelewu before our boat developed a problem because of the dirt on the high sea and boat operators have to stop, do a quick repair and continue their journey. All boats carry fuel for every journey in kegs like this. Five kegs of fuel is what is needed for the journey to and from Sekelewu. Tools for repairing fault is a common sight. And when there is a problem, boat operators turn to mechanics, loosen boats and nuts with spanner in hand. There is water everywhere, but Sekelewu is thirsty as there is none to drink. The river, as deep as 10 meters before oil exploration began, has been silted to less than a meter in depth. The fresh water has been replaced by salty water from the Atlantic Ocean. The people can no longer drink from it. Fishing activities have been affected. The beautiful vegetation is no more, and by extension, the means of livelihood for some persons have been affected. Logging activities too are nearly non-existent. Women have to travel far on canoes to get firewood for cooking. Hunting for periwinkle takes hours upon hours. The water was blessed, but now it's an irony. The, the occupation of our people is fishing, lumbering, canoe carving, hunting and all that. But today all those activities are no more because they are no longer plants, no longer animals, no, no longer fishes. So people can no longer fish. In fact, we used to buy ice fish from uh, Sapele, Wari, you know, buy frozen food to go and you know, sell in the community for people to eat. And that is not the nature of a typical German. We normally get our fishes from a river before, but today the fishes are no more. For a German to say we depend on that uh, I fish and then eat. Oh, it's an abomination. We are dying. Government should 
pay particular attention that the federal government, the state government and the company particular attention. For the sake of young and old, life must go on regardless of obvious problems. Mama spends her time weaving baskets and fishing nets. She intricately weaves them beautifully, but fishing activities have since nosedived. A stall is full, but business is at a standstill. Others paddle their canoes with fishing nets looking for wood to buy. Community members carry drums in their canoes to look for portable water in neighboring communities. Coupling equipment, pipes, engines, work is ongoing here to drill a borehole for the community. But the search for water is a daunting task. I've been on this for two months now, trying to sink a borehole for the community. But because of the, the, the waterways and the pollution and everything, even getting water to drill is a very serious problem. So we are just like on an island because the water is already polluted. We couldn't get the water to get to drill the main well, so it's hell for us drilling. The secondary school you see over there, built by Chevron. As at when that secondary school was built, Chevron was able to bring in all the materials with the use of a barge, which is propelled by tugboats. They could bring those materials easily because the river was very deep. And as at that time, they could use their sea trucks, modern to marine, there's a, 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 a watercraft they call Sima 115 that can maneuver in the creeks adequately. But today you can't try that. Even the speedboats, when it slows down, it can no longer fly. You have to drive slowly until you get to a deep area before the boat can fly. That is how bad the creeks have become due to siltation. We met Adebayo Abo, a retiree. He tells us that the place wasn't always like this. This river was very deep at the time. I was young. But now it's very shallow because of the exploration of oil and dredging of the uh, internal uh, uh, creeks into the sea. So it makes salt water to penetrate inland. Now we don't have water to drink. After some time, emotions set in. The government and companies should come to our aid. I am about uh, 79 years. For this suffering, at this age, you should not leave me alone. Minutes later, I walked into a room filled with men and noticed that women are not involved. This youth leader is given a report to members of the community who was sent as a representative to meet with the oil companies. He has brought back messages from ongoing negotiations between the community and the oil companies. The faces of the old and young.
even though this flame, all those smoke, they come to rest on those houses. But just like we are drinking this smoke into our stomach, there's no employment, nothing, nothing. If they give you skill, skill training, they will not employ you for work. You come and suffer. So there's nothing we are benefiting for several. So they should do something about this community. Fire blazing into the sky and affecting residents of Sikiliwu. An oil well is on fire again. And as it rages on, the soot descends upon Sikiliwu and other riverine communities heavily. Protests on water and on land in Sikilewu and other communities around the area have almost become a norm. The young and old also gather frequently to protest against the lack of social amenities in their community that houses oil companies. As you can see, this is rainwater. Rain, we can't drink it. The women there are in danger. We can't, we can't eat the fish. The elderly woman that went out for fishing, she was an asthmatic patient, but as a result of inhaling gas, the woman collapsed and died. The suit combined with oil droplets are falling our community like dew drops. And this has polluted the water body, the land, the air. You know, as you can see, I can't breathe normally because of the oil that is in the atmosphere right now. The thing has taken a different dimension. So we are calling on the federal government, state government, international community to come to our aid, to rescue of this immediate danger of what we never been bargained for because it, our lives have been threatened seriously. The Delta state government, led by Senator Dr. Ifan Yokua, is a responsive government who send a high-power Delta State government team, possibly in collaboration with Chevron Nigeria Limited, to see first and what the issues are, with a view to addressing some of them. I believe very strongly that if we sit down to look at these issues at the heart, strategically, we will be able to find a long-lasting solution. We set out to another part of the community on foot. This time, we were thankful for the kind of shoes we had on. One by one, we navigated through dirt mixed with oil. But these school children aren't so lucky. They went through the path with their feet. sleepers and sandals in hand, they navigate, climbing stilts to access other communities. Oily legs for them is a way of life. We went to Mian Primary School, equipped with seven classrooms an administrative office and a staff room. There are only four government teachers, five PTA teachers to teach eight subjects. In September 2018, the school was flooded and people were navigating through the black liquid that looked like fuel than water. entered one of the classes and the evidence of previous flooding was found. This puddle lying in the corner shows that at a time the school was sacked by flood. It's one of the oldest schools in the whole of the Bini River here. One of the oldest schools. Some of us that you are looking at now, we, we finished from this primary school before we went further. But the problem the school now have is that in every rainy season the school is flooded. There is flooding, I mean, right now even, you see, it has started flooding now. There are no chairs for, for children to even sit, I mean, that is, uh, pupils to sit down. When the river is uh, very shallow, 
the water will have to find I mean that is a way to go and that is what we are experiencing now the flooding is not this primary school alone do you look I mean that you know the community is flooded during rainy season walls have lost their shine and spirogyra is gradually taking over even ceilings are gradually giving in In another class, children are seen on the cold floor taking lessons. Some lucky ones have desks. Learning has to go on in unfavorable conditions. Talk too much. The situation was the same in another class, this time. Even girls were on the floor receiving lessons. When the rain starts, for two, three consecutive days, that school building will not be in use because it will be half submerged. So the whole floor, everywhere down to window level, you know, will be flooded. So students cannot use it. In fact, last year, primary school was not in session during the rainy season because of this same flood issue. And the flood is as a result of the river depth that has become so, so shallow. We could see the roof, electricity installations hanging. Flooding is a major problem in Sikilewu. When it pours, it's difficult for residents to get by. The water stays on the same level with houses on stilts. Some residents even have to scoop water out of their houses as the water and everything, livelihood, education, businesses, stand still. We moved to Sekelewu Secondary School. Children were trying to get rid of the weeds in front of an abandoned block. The building donated by the NNPC Chevron Joint Venture and inaugurated in 1996, is devoid of maintenance, light bulbs hanging, electricity meters are all rusty, ceilings falling, and rusty burglaries, toilet sinks are dirty, and we can see broken glass all over the floor. A new building, however, sits comfortably in another corner. A 1,000 kVA soundproof generating plant supplied by the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development serves the community and it comes up at 7 p.m. But the community wants a steady supply of, of electricity. <laughs> Melodious tunes from speakers went there as we left Sekelu. And the weather starts to change. The clouds are pregnant, ready for a downpour. The sky released its content and we experienced firsthand another problem. It's raining heavily out there and this is the only cover that we get to protect ourselves and our equipment. Now, on a normal day, if it's not raining, it takes you about two hours, 45 minutes from Sapele to Sekeleu. But now that it's raining and we're covered and the boatman has to do a lot of work to wade through the waters, I wonder how many hours to take us from Sekeleu to Sapele. Now, hands are up to support the water gathered atop the tarpaulin from coming in. This is what community members along the Benin River have to face. The river stopped and the boat operator was all drenched. And as we began sighting Sapele, we heaved a sigh of relief. Oh 
Our journey continued on land. We left Sekilewu and surrounding villages behind. And as the fire blazes on, with its impact on the environment, so is the fire in the hearts of community members of Sekilewu who are looking forward to better days.